Hola YouTube and welcome back to my channel. I am your girl Vita Balanoria across all my social media platforms. If you would, please go ahead and thumbs up this video. Get a conversation started with me in the comment section below. Everything I use will be listed in my description box below. Go ahead and share this video amongst your family and friends. That's pretty much it with the intro. There is no long intro with this one. We're going to go ahead and get into my Mardi Gras look that I went ahead and recreated. I did a little, a little bit different. So I'm happy that I was able to go ahead and film this one for you guys. And we're also going to get a little chit chat going with what has been happening in the last 45 days. It seems like it's one issue, one story, one drama, one what the heck after the other. We're going to go ahead and get into this and you can go ahead and sound off below. But if you're ready, let's go ahead and get into this book. You're my bitter one taking me home. Okay, guys, so we're going to start out with my eyebrows already done. We're going to go ahead and get into this chit-chat, get ready with me. Actually, I'm just recreating my Mardi Gras look that I did. Um, I know I started posting videos with that look. You guys are going to be like, so where's the look at, man? <laughs> so we're just going to go ahead and recreate that look. Face is already washed and moisturized. Um, I did have on lip balm. Let's go ahead and put some more back on. I'm going to put on my Too Faced Lip Injection, the glossy one, so my lips can be moisturized while I'm busy doing the rest of my actual face. And that is a plumping lip gloss, so it will help with some of the plumping throughout your day, but it typically wears off within two, three hours, so um, it's just something you can just start out with, really. I decided I wanted to use my Milk Makeup. This is the Eye Pigment, and this is in the color Rave. It looks like this. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it through my crease and I'm going to use my old school. This is an e.l.f. Cosmetics. This is an eyeshadow brush. So I'm going to take and just put it on the tip of the brush because I really want this color and pigment to really stand out. So we're going to go in here pretty high up and just go ahead and lay this down. And it is an actual shimmer base. So that's not anything I'm too worried about at this point because I'm about to go in here and cover it up with something else different. But I did want to make sure that I did go ahead and get a base down. So this way I will have something a little bit more pigmented for the shadows to stick to. And I'll take off and wipe off any additional product on the back of my hand and go in here and just make sure I'm feathering out those edges. Now I'm going to go in with my pre-made purple eyeshadow palette. And I'm going to go ahead and take this shade right here, pop it out. This is from Coastal Scents, and this is in the shade Cinnabar Rose. And I'm going to use this on another e.l.f. Cosmetics brush. And I'm just going to go in here. And I'm just going to use that just to go across and blend out. And I'm just using that to blend out the top line, so it's no harsh line right there. Now, after we get that purple add it and blend it out. Now we're going to go into a Give Me Glow Cosmetics. This is their L15 eyeshader brush. And I'm going to go into a purple that I got in a couple years back. This is from Makeup Revolution. And I don't know if it has, yeah, it doesn't have any information on the back. These are just Z palettes that I used to depot back in the day. So I'm going to go into that purple and deepen up my crease with this purple. And I'm packing and putting the color down first before I actually go ahead and start to actually blend. But yeah, so as far as the chit chat get ready with me part goes. So, you know, I knew I was going to film this look and do this look for you guys. But I've also been very well aware of what's been happening in the news here within the last 45 days. Uh, complete shit show. Complete shit show. You know, starting out with the whole Jesse Smollett situation. You know, as far as this Jesse Smollett situation goes, I am still one of those people who am reserving any type of opinion and judgment because the story had holes in it to begin with. Let's just be honest. When you first heard that story, something was just like, what? What? One of the coldest days in the winter in Chicago, he was out at 2 a.m. getting a foot long sub. 
like we ain't got Uber Eats so like I, I it's just it was just something about the story that just struck everybody as what the heck starting out and you know the fact that you know everything that surrounded the story I don't know any black person that would keep a noose around their neck uh longer than that noose actually had to be around their neck so that part of the story I was just like like you an actor so of all the acting classes PR classes and everything you went to you can come up with but, you know, most of the information that was released in reference to that story did come from the actual cops and <laughs> not just the actual cops, the Chicago PD. And they don't have necessarily the best track record as far as being completely upfront and honest with the actual public. So that's the reason why everybody took what they were saying and what was happening with the grain of salt even though the story itself really didn't have that much merit to begin with. It was just, uh, for lack of better words, it was a really weird story. Now I'm gonna go into my Beauty Creations, the Elsa palette they have. And I'm gonna take a very deep purple out of the palette. They don't have names. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a mixture of these two purples right here. I'll go ahead and take these two and mix. I can keep my fingernails out the eyeshadow, that'd be great. But I'm gonna go ahead and mix that and go ahead and deepen up that crease just a little bit. But back to like what I was saying. It was just, you know, the entire story. It just, it was just weird. You know, just listening to it and hearing it, you were just like, what? Like, but I don't get it. Like. It, it was just weird. And the fact that, you know, he just got hit with these new indictments that just came down. He's looking at up to 64 years in jail, paying a fine. Of course, he's gonna have to pay a fine if he loses the sexual case because of the amount of uh, man hours and police work that had to go into the actual case. Uh, that's a no-brainer when it comes to that particular situation. But you're like, dude is he being framed and set up or is he really this stupid and <laughs> you're like if he is being framed and set up they go into the extremes with that one um but if he really did do it then you just like first of all it's 2019 so you cannot treat 2019 like you used to treat 2008 heck 2002 back in the day you know somebody you were like i know this person they would never do this i cannot believe this i'm not gonna believe this i'm not gonna go as far as queen latifah and be like until i see evidence i'm not gonna believe it no nah, i'm not gonna do that because it is 2019 and if 2018 and 2017 has showed and taught us anything is times have changed and times are different now meaning People do the craziest stuff now for attention, whatever it may be. And you may be looking at some people like, well, they already have so much money and just so much whatever else you may want to think or call it. But it doesn't matter if you have $50 or $5,000, or $500,000, or $500 million. Clout and chase, clout, the come up and chasing the next big thing, or just being able to get away with some stuff like Robert Kraft. <laughs> We're gonna get into that too. It's just like, you can never put it beyond somebody because you think they know, because you think you know their character, because of how much money they have, or because of how successful they are, or because of how famous they are. Boo, n none of that matters. Absolutely none of that matters. But, you know, I again, with the whole Jesse Smollett situation, of course, we're all sitting here like, boy, I, I don't want to believe it. I, I hope, you know, against all odds, he was really just out trying to get some subway. Please tell me you was really out just trying to get some subway. But... <laughs> The more and more that story goes on, the more and more it's a, a shit show. And it's definitely starting to go left real, real fast. So now that we have the purple laid down and done, now I'm going to go ahead and go into my green palette that I went ahead and did and created. And this is all Makeup Geek, Anastasia, MAC. 
uh, pretty much any company that sells single eyeshadows, I have bought a single eyeshadow from them to be able to test the formulations. And the ones I keep, I make palettes out of. And this one is another Coastal Scents. And this one is Fresh Chive. And this is what Fresh Chive looks like. So I'm going to go in here and see. Actually, I already know it's not going to work. So I'm just going to take a makeup wipe. And I'm going to clean up just a little bit. And I just cleaned it up just a little bit. And I'll go back in with a pigment primer. This is gonna be my NYX pigment primer. And I'll go ahead and go on top of that just to go ahead and get it primed and ready. And I'm gonna go ahead and pack the shadows down. Right now I'm using a Sigma Eye Shading E55 brush. And I'm just gonna go in here and take, go into the shadow. And I'm just gonna go ahead and press and pack that down first. And it should be looking something like that. Now that line of demarcation, that clear obvious line in between the purple and the green, don't worry about that right now. Right now you're just placing shadow. Now once we have that down and blended, I'm gonna take on the back of my hand and swerve off most of it on the back of my hand. And now I'll go in to the exact line and blend. Now I'm gonna go in over top of that and I'm using my Kat Von D, and this is in the shade Iggy. And it's just a deep metallic green. And I'll use my finger to go in and do this and just pat that over top. So it'll start to look something like that. And you can already start to see some of the Mardi Gras colors coming together. And you'll take and you'll go ahead and blend that back out again. Sometimes when you're having a problem blending, the one thing I will tell you to do is go in with a shimmer and allow that shimmer to help you blend. Now going out here, I'm not really worried about the blend out here because my eye liner is gonna cut right here. So I just need to make sure we have a seamless blend right there at that point. And I'm using the brush I laid down the dark purple with. I didn't add any more product to it. I'm just using the existing product to go ahead and blend out. So the whole Jesse Smollett situation again, uh, I'm really hoping that <sighs> I'm hoping that this is true. He didn't do that. You know, nobody's really that stupid. The next shade we're going to go in is from Sample Beauty. And this is going to be one of their pigments. And this is the pigment in Sean Maloney. And we're going to use this on the inner part. This is what it looks like. Uh oh. I'm wasting it everywhere. But okay, so this is what it looks like right there on the tip of my finger. This is what you're gonna get. So I'm gonna go in with a flat brush to do this. Kind of fluffy, I'm gonna use the Jessup 226 smudger brush. And because this is more of a loose glitter pigment primer, a loose, <laughs> this is more of a loose pigment, kind of really, really chunky, like it's a glitter. I'm gonna definitely go ahead and wet this. I'm gonna use my Mario Badescu. This is the facial spray with aloe, calomel, and lavender. And I'm gonna use this to go ahead and wet it a little bit so it becomes a little bit of foil before. And we're gonna use this on the inner part out. With this, you wanna go ahead and press. Press down first and then wipe. And use what's left on the brush to start to blend into the actual green. So you'll go in one more time. Make sure you spray it to avoid as much fallout as possible. And we're gonna take this in just a little bit higher. And make sure you feather out into the green so there's no harsh line. You're gonna take your green and just pack over that where the two lines meet. And all you're doing is making sure there's no harsh line of demarcation where they go from one color to the other. And now you can take your purple again and go back into the top and brush away anything that is starting to transfer 
extra places it doesn't need to be. And now I'm gonna go into my e.l.f. Makeup Lock and Seal. And the thing that I use this for is anytime I have glitters or shimmers that I feel may actually transfer for whatever reason, I'll take and put just a little bit in my actual hand. And I'll take a flat brush with no product and I'll go ahead and get this put into the actual product and I'll just go ahead and go over it. And all you're doing is just, you're not swiping, you're just patting. And you'll let that dry. And pretty much this will help lock that pigment in place and it'll also keep it from transferring throughout your other transitional colors that you've already placed down. So make sure you go ahead and let that dry. Now, moving on to the next part <laughs> that, you know, that whole Chloe, Chloe Kardashian, Jordan, and Tristan situation. Complete hot mess, complete shit show. I'm on Jordan's side with that whole situation because, yeah, no, I just... <laughs> it's been certain things that I've been watching and paying attention to over the past five, six years that, mm, I used to be a huge Kardashian fan like a huge Kardashian stand. And I'm keeping my eyes closed down low because you don't, while it's drying, you don't want to start to move it because wherever you move it to, that's where it's going to be stuck to you wash it off. But like I was saying, there were certain things that were happening that I just, you know, have been watching and I'm just like, mm, mm. Like sometimes you just got to know when to pull back from certain things. Now that I have that down and in place, now I just want to go back in with that actual purple and just deepen up that line. And I'm going to go ahead and take that deep dark purple and go back in here, right on top of the actual gold. So it has a little bit more popping, just like that, guys. Yeah, but you know, I, I just thought it was weird when it came to the whole Kardashian situation that you would have these grown women in their late 30s, early 40s, Liza, all of them, going in on this young 21-year-old woman for mistakes they've done themselves and done repeatedly to their friends and egregiously. I mean, from Liza cheating on Scotty with Future. Do you really have room to talk about anybody else in anybody else's situation? Girl, go sit down. And Chloe, really? Do we want to talk about the Trina situation? Do we want to talk about the Laura London situation? I'm not saying you can't feel pity for a woman when she's in a situation to where she's getting her heart broken repeatedly by a guy. But in the same breath, allow me to say karma is a mug and it is definitely coming for you. To your point blank, you can't continuously live your life at that level of buffoonery and not think karma's not coming back. So now that we have that eye done, we're gonna go ahead and do the other one and come back for you guys. Now that I got glitter everywhere, like we're gonna go ahead and go into, y'all already know, my black e.l.f. precision eyeliner. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this to go ahead and line these eyes. But like I was saying, you know, just sitting there watching Kim and Malika and Chloe and Miss X Scotty Pippen, just sitting there watching them come for a young lady that is easily 10, 15 years their junior. And that particular situation was just completely stupid to me, especially considering their past and aggressions and the reason why, you know, they're in the position they're in when it comes to just certain stupid things when it comes to social media. You would think they would have already taken a page out of their own playbook to let certain things go and don't clap back so hard. But, you know, Chloe put the nail on her own coffin with the whole situation because Black Twitter was not having it. And they completely read her to filth. And she made the number one mistake when it comes to 2019. Why are you going back and forth for people on social media? Because in between you being in your feelings about a situation and going back and forth, you're going to wind up letting the cat out the bag on some stuff you probably shouldn't have. And Black Twitter kept coming back and forth for her. And she kept going back and forth with people on Twitter. And honey, please, no, absolutely not. 
And then when Will and Jada got involved with that situation, you see how quickly people started to back off that situation. How quickly those tables turned. And you know, after listening to her interview, the red table talk and everything, I understand there were certain things that she couldn't talk about, she couldn't discuss. Um, you know, the Kardashians and the NDA non-disclosures, you know, there's just certain things you can and can't say. So I already knew the interview wasn't gonna be an explosive interview. You know, it's just it's not that. So I'm just hoping she learns since she's so young. You know, everyone was saying, oh, she got kicked out of Cali's house. She got to go back live with her parents. The girl is a millionaire. Her, she comes from a family of wealth. Uh, her, not really godparents, but you can go ahead and call them something like her godparents, so Will and Jada. Trust and believe, if she don't do nothing else in her life, she'll be just fine. That girl will be just fine. But this is a lesson that she's learned because of course when the story first broke, everybody thought it had something to do with the new season of Keeping Up with the Kardashians. And wondering why would Jordan decide to be the sacrificial lamb in this particular situation. But you know, we've all been young out drinking and we may not have made the best decisions for ourselves, you know. So that that's life. But it's a good thing that she learns now that lesson in life so if she starts to get older she doesn't still have to continue to make these same stupid mistakes that no matter what you do alcohol is never going to be an excuse or a reason for what you do if you can't control yourself don't drink period point blank you can't get into a head-on collision and say i was drunk i didn't mean to kill these people you shouldn't have been driving you shouldn't have been drinking like Alcohol does not negate your responsibility for whatever situation you cause and or put yourself in. So that whole situation, I'm Team Jordan, just in case you hadn't figured it out. And, you know, moving into the whole R. Kelly situation. <laughs> that whole R. Kelly situation is just beyond me stupid. Let me take you back so we can go ahead and get on to the face. Now, the whole R. Kelly situation is just, like, beyond me. Like, I can't even... I, 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 I can't, I have no words for that situation because there isn't anything that I can say or do in reference to that situation to where it would even make sense. Um, we're going to go ahead and go in here with the e.l.f. matte. This is their oil, oil control primer. And on top of that, I'm going to go in with my e.l.f. poreless putty primer. So we're going to go ahead and put this down first. Um, hopefully this works. Since both of these are going to be first impressions for me to really try to see if it works. So this way we can see if this is something that, you know, you guys may want to add to your baskets or whatever. But I will say this is coming out as a clear silicone. So let's go ahead and put this on. But yeah, this whole R. Kelly situation, man, please. <laughs> There's absolutely nobody who is over a certain age who wasn't around in the 90s who knew he married Aaliyah. So I already knew about the problem in a situation. Uh, the documentary did tell us how Aaliyah even got in his possession like that, which is crazy to me. I didn't know that it was our own family that had her in that particular situation. I think that was the most explosive thing for me. And hearing about the women and how they were kept in the house again, that was something I didn't know about. You know what I'm saying? So for anybody to be like, T. Mark Kelly, he didn't do it, blah, 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 blah. It's not the same situation as this Michael Jackson thing. Now, this Leave Another Netherland thing that Oprah did, canceled, canceled. The FBI did a probe and an investigation over 10 years. They completely destroyed his life throughout pretty much the last 15 years of his life. And time and time again, he came out innocent, innocent, innocent. Like, it's just... <laughs> Michael was special, he was touched. He just, as he grew older, he longed for his childhood. And he didn't necessarily make the best decisions as a grown ass man when it came to dealing with young children. But do I believe he did anything with them kids? No, Team Michael with that. And that whole Oprah thing was just like, trash, trash. Like, I'm not saying anything about the victims. That is not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying, trash, but. That's a totally different situation. R. Kelly, 
it doesn't matter what your ethnic background is, what you believe, what you don't believe. It's just certain things you already know when it comes to that particular situation. That's just crazy to me, for me personally, and dealing with that particular situation. But just hearing how the people around him allow him to help facilitate that whole situation. Now that part, that part blew my mind. The fact that somebody could sit there and tell you to go get a girl and bring them back to a grown man and you did it repeatedly for years, even during the trial and after the trial that happened in 2008, you still did it. Even after the Aaliyah situation came out, you still did it. And the fact that these people got the hotel rooms and properties and different things and their names so it wouldn't always trace back to him. You know, that's crazy. What really made me decide to talk about the R. Kelly situation was we have a situation coming up to where um, this primer is a little too silicone. Like, I keep trying to put it on and smooth it out. But it keeps moving stuff. Like, it's making everything oily. Like, it's pulling my eyebrows crazy. So, I'm going to have to go back in and fix them. And I, I don't know about that primer. I don't know about that primer. We're going to have to see. But because it's already doing something crazy, I'm already going to go ahead and go back in and mattify and set down this primer. So, I'm going to go ahead and take my Real Techniques by Sam and Nick. This is their Instapop Cheek Brush. And I'm going to go into my Flower Beauty Setting Powder and set this down because it's moving and I'm not a fan of that. But anyway, while I'm busy doing this, uh, yeah, that whole situation was just crazy to me. And when the indictments came down, I wasn't surprised. I knew something was happening. I knew that story, you know, they already said that story was a way for the victims to get their stories out there. So... Some of them can't get justice because a statute of limitation, but the ones who can get justice are definitely trying to come back with justice. They have new videotapes, new evidence, you know, new VHS tapes that was, <laughs> that are like 20 years old, between 15 and 20 years old. And I'm like, what the devil? I don't understand, like, at what point was you sitting on this? See, the fact that people sat on those tapes, I'm not saying R. Kelly didn't do it, but the fact that they sat on these tapes lets me know you sat on this tape until the money ran out, and when he could no longer pay you, that's when you decided, I'm going to turn you in. But the first round of indictments that came out, we weren't all that surprised with because we knew it was coming, we knew it was happening. I didn't think it was going to be 10 counts, but, but I do know last night, about 2 a.m., more information broke, a story broke last night about 2 a.m. about more indictments coming with that actual case. And it's going to be pulling in his handlers, the people who help facilitate, who help move these girls, who help transport these girls across state lines, the ones who booked these hotel rooms in these girls' name, the hotels that they went to who didn't require ID for somebody who's obviously under the age 18 to actually come into their hotel and have a whole hotel room by themselves like so i know the federal indictment that's coming are about to list 19 different names and also i do believe they're going after the hotels too in this whole situation as far as statute of limitations will allow them when that story broke last night at 2 a.m i was like well you don't get your life your entire life together but I'm one of those people. I'm about to use my matte ambition. This is a full coverage cover girl. And this is in the shade Deep Cool. It's a little too dark for me, but I'm going to use it anyway. I'm sitting up here like um, I did three pumps on the back of my hand. And I'm going to go ahead and use these new sponges that I got. I've heard um, Juicy Jazz here on YouTube talking about these. Dollar General sponges that come three in a pack and they're three dollars and fifty cents. They start out being super small like that and then they blow up to this size and this size. So all three of these were actually in the bag that small and they blow up to be this size. Um, I did go ahead and wash and rinse them out. I do that with all of my sponges. This one is more of a contour type sponge you would use and also for your eyes as far as concealer and this is your face sponge 
Uh, it looks just like a black beauty blender. Just like a black beauty blender, period. So we're gonna go ahead and give this a try and see how it actually works to see if it's something that I can recommend for you guys because if you can go ahead and get three sponges for $3.50 from Dollar General, boom. You ain't gotta worry about ordering online, going to different places, doing different things. This may just be the business for you. It may be the business for you. But anyway, back to this whole R. Kelly situation. Um, <laughs> hot mess, hot, hot mess. I don't understand how this can even be something that y'all think is okay under any circumstance in dealing with the actual situation. I'm just like, I always, uh, what you see me doing, sorry guys. <laughs> I always take and paint my foundations on first before I actually go in and blend them out. And I really go ahead and put most of the product in the area where I actually need the coverage. And then I'll go ahead and take the brush and start to blend it in. So while we're sitting here talking, let's go ahead and get the blending in. So this next line of indictments and everything that's coming down about this whole situation, I'm just more or less like, ugh. It's about time. It is about time that these victims are actually starting to get justice. They're actually able to have something happen with the actual situation. Because to be honest with you, it should have never happened to begin with. Now, the one thing I will say is this is a medium. This is a light coverage foundation. It didn't soak up a lot of the product on the actual blender. It looks like more product on the actual camera because of the lights, but it really did suck up a lot of product. And as I'm looking at my face, you can still see a whole lot of imperfections and different things coming through on the face. And that was three pumps. So let's go in with another three pumps. And go ahead and focus this in the areas that actually need the actual coverage. But I just think the entire situation is crazy. I am happy that these young ladies are finally going to get some type of day of justice when it comes to the situation, but it should have been happened. You know, him being able to get away with the case 11 years ago had a lot to do with his popularity and his ability to really change the court of public opinion. And the fact that the own victim's family refused to let her testify and identify herself as the actual victim, which to me was just horseshit. But this next round of indictments that's coming, that of course, I'm surprised the Shade Room and TMZ hadn't already picked up on it yet. And again, I'm not really understanding why the victims themselves are going to bloggers and different news media outlets versus going to the police and the FBI to go ahead and get their story out there. I do know that some of them have book deals and movies and different things in place with further gives R. Kelly. <laughs> the people who still support him, his fans and everything, that's the reason why they feel like he's not guilty, he didn't do this, even though you know he married Aaliyah, like, I don't know, who knows what your problem is, but, you know, whatever. That's the reason why a lot of people still can't seem to let the whole situation go when it comes to R. Kelly, is because if all of this happened and all of this is going on, why now are you wanting, well, actually in 2017 is when it started to happen. But why now is it that you're wanting to come forward, you're wanting to tell your story, and of course there is no timeline for a victim to tell their story. There's a statute of limitations as far as what the law can do about it, but there is no timeline for a victim to come by and tell their story. Uh, that's the problem with the Me Too movement. Something that happened 30 years ago can now come back and completely kill you, but if you did it, you did it. <laughs> but I'm just like, I don't know if I don't like this foundation or if I don't like the primers and stuff underneath it. I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if I just don't like the foundation or I don't like the primers and stuff underneath it. Because that's six pumps of foundation. 
And again, it's obviously too dark for me, so I'm going to have to color correct that with my actual concealer. I'm going to just keep going. We're just going to keep going. We're going to keep going, and we're going to see exactly how this plays itself out. Let's, let's, let's just keep going. So I'm going to go ahead and use my e.l.f. Camo. Um, e.l.f. This is a 16-hour camo concealer, and I have the shade Medium Sand. Again, I told you guys this was too light, but in... Looking at my face, <laughs> we're going to need this to balance it out anyway. So, you like, laying wood and then melanin infused. Hell, what's going on? Like, okay. You'll see. You'll see what we do with this one. Don't freak out just yet. Don't freak out just yet. <laughs> Start freaking out in just a minute if it don't work out. If it don't work out, then we can both start freaking out together. But for right now, don't freak out just yet. Um, this e.l.f. 16-hour camo concealer, it does have the big dofa applicator, like the sharp shape, <laughs> the tart shape tape, and also like the Makeup Revolution um, Conceal and Define Foundation and Concealers. So that's one thing about it that I do actually like. But let's go in here and blend this thing out. And let's just see what happens. Oh. Oh, this is a hot mess. Okay. So I'm going to show you how you would fix this. Don't freak out just yet, and don't be like abort mission just yet. I'm gonna show you how to fix this. Even though it looks like, what, oh Jesus. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how, how you're gonna go in and fix this. Take a drop of your foundation. Well, in this case, take two since it'd be doing the most. And just put just a little bit of the foundation in with it. This is, this is, this is, this is going to heal pretty fast. I'm taking the rest of the foundation that I put on the actual back of my hand and I'm going to take and use this to blend around it. Jesus. More foundation. At this point, I've used 10 pumps of foundation to help go back in and take care of this situation. And it has a lot to do with, uh, yeah, um, of all the things I should have used, maybe this ain't one of them. But I will go ahead and say that the absolute star of this show right now are these makeup sponges. These makeup sponges are amazing. Okay, let's go in and fix the other eye. Oh God. Oh. The tip of the sponge really allows you to get right into that inner corner, and I really like that. Okay, so I'm definitely gonna need a darker shade of that Elf Camo Concealer. And when I say a darker shade, I'm talking about a shade super dark. Because at this point, the only thing I could ever use that concealer for Hey, this is the reason why you guys follow me. I'm going to show you how makeup messes up and how you can go back in and fix it. So, don't freak out just yet. Don't freak out just yet. Okay, so since we had that happen, we're about to go ahead and do some heavy contouring. Very heavy contouring to bring color back to my actual complexion. And I'm using the Makeup Revolution Concealer Define, and this is in C16. Okay. 
probably go overboard just a little bit to help kind of take away so much of that highlighted effect. And I'm using the same brush that I went in that I had the actual foundation on when I was trying to fix that to actually go ahead and blend this out. And anytime you're doing your makeup and something starts to go to crap like that, don't give up. Just keep working and keep blending it. And I'm blending pretty high up on my cheeks so that way it doesn't go too far down right here. And working pretty fast because this concealer dries pretty fast. And now I can go back in here and blend the two lines together so I don't have any weird lines of uh, demarcation. So that is, don't worry, don't fret. Don't freak out just yet. We, we, we'll, we'll fix it because the undertone of the concealer and everything is completely, say it with me people, completely wrong. Right now I'm using my Fenty Beauty Honey Setting Powder, the one that I always use. And I'm just gonna go under here and blend out these creases and then I'll go ahead and set. Now while we're letting that set, I'm gonna go back into my Flower Beauty and set the rest of my face down. And I'm using my Juvia's Place, this is a J213 round buffer brush to go back in and just press the powder into my skin. I didn't contour my jawline in this particular video because you'll see. I knew that the foundation was darker, so I didn't have to go in and necessarily contour or do anything down here because it's going to create a natural contour for me, see? Well, you can actually see where it's more red in here from the foundation being a little too darker and then my skin tone as it comes through, but we'll make it work. Now, while I'm busy wiping away all this powder, all my actual skin, yeah, last night when the documents were kind of revealed what's coming down from the actual feds with that R. Kelly case. I was like, how in the heck do these bloggers and stuff and gossip sites get this information before anybody else? Like, I'm cons I'm just like, hey, the devil works hard, but news outlets work harder. They gonna definitely get the information. If it's there to get, they, they're gonna find a way. So last night when the, when the information broke, and the private investigators and everything that's been going on and been happening with it, I was just like, jeez. Like, first of all, his interview he did with Gail, I was just like, who who on your team told you that this was a good idea and that you should go ahead and do this? It's the reason why when people are up in those type of situations, why they don't do interviews. That R. Kelly interview that just continuously gets made into meme after meme is the reason why a lot of times they don't do interviews and a lot of times they don't even take the stand in their self in their own defense because you actually do more harm than good in those type of situations and you should be more or less concerned about making sure everything is going pretty well for you in the public court of public opinion even though that doesn't have anything to do with it for the most part when it comes to a case. But in this particular case, it's impossible to find any county anywhere here in the United States that don't understand who R. Kelly is and what the charges are in that case or the severity of the charges in that case. So that's going to be another issue. If I was his legal team, I'm not team R. Kelly in any type of way, but if I was his legal team, That'll be part of one of the things I would bring up. How do you expect my client to get a fair trial when everyone in America has seen this information, knows about this information, and have already predetermined and judged him? Federal government gonna come back with half the people online support him and half the people don't. So that's a, that's a pool. That's, that's pulling from a pool for a jury of his peers. <laughs> but wrong color. Um, 
I'm not having any problems or issues with the way that it's sitting on my skin. It was just the wrong color and I had to go through a lot to fix that. When it comes to doing makeup and just being able to show you guys what happens during the makeup process and how you can go in and fix stuff. Again, I'm taking my milk pigment again and I'm going to use this on my bottom lashes. I'm not one of the ones who is going to have a problem happen or go wrong. <clears throat> Excuse me. Doing filming and go through the whole process of washing their face and starting over again. I'm going to show you all of the mistakes. So this way you become better at your own craft and better at being able to set different things up to where if you ever have a problem in doing your makeup, you're not sitting there screaming and wondering, oh my God, what happened and how do I fix this? You'll know how. Don't lose your clue. Definitely don't give up. Just, 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 just stay calm, stay focused. Makeup and eyeliner can smell fear. Don't let them get the best of you. And I go in first like this, and then I'll turn it to the side for blending after I've already laid down the product. And I bring it down and blend down pretty low, and that helps cover up any lines and wrinkles you have, so it's just smooth skin. Makeup trick. If you have like fine lines and wrinkles or weekly under eyes or just whatever, I have a weird fold that I always have in my eyes. So I always do that to help cover up that weird fold in my natural eyes. But now we'll go ahead and we'll go back and go in and do some of the actual fun part. And the fun part is going to be putting the green in the actual middle. But before I put the green in the middle, I want to go ahead and line my actual waterline. But enough about this whole R. Kelly situation because it's just stupid. And at this point, I'm just over it. I'm just wanting to wait and see what the final outcome is. Like with all of this that you guys are doing and saying, I'm using my um, Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Pencil and Perversion. I thought this look would be really pretty grounded with the actual black to make it a little bit more wearable. Now I'm just going back in at the waterline. And I lined inside of my lash. And I, I, I lined inside the waterline and right underneath my lash. So I can go back and smear it and smudge it out. So it creates, it stops me from having to do an additional step. And going back in with the smaller tight line brush and tight line. And then you'll see that's the look we get so far. And now I'm going to go in and pop some purple on the bottom as well. I'm lying, I meant the green. We're going back into the Kat Von D green and we're gonna pop this on the bottom. And I'm putting it up and going up because I know it's gonna have just a little bit of fallout because of the way I just packed it on. And I put that right there in the center. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing to the other eye. But I packed quite a bit on the actual brush to do this. But yeah, I definitely hope that these young ladies find their justice. I definitely hope that these young ladies get some type of counseling to help them deal with the situation so they can be acclimated, you know, placed back into society without having so many fears as far as people being bad and people not looking out for them, not taking care of them, just the whole situation. I definitely hope that the Clarice do get their daughter back, even though they sold. Let me not say that. Allegedly, I'm not even going to say allegedly. Uh, yeah, some of these parents in this whole situation are complete crazy. And watching the Lifetime documentary, some of that stuff really started to, it stood, it stood out to me. It stood out to me that I understand what you're saying, but in the same breath, allow me to say, that doesn't make any sense. Nothing about this situation. And right now I'm just going back over with the purple, the lighter purple I have right here on the top. I'm not putting any additional product on the brush. I'm just going in and just doing the final blend and putting a little bit of that color and I'm going underneath my eye bag. <laughs> and that's a great way for you guys to do it as well. And that's what it'll look like. And of course you'll go in with an actual brush. 
I'm just using a regular Morphe S13 to go ahead and swipe away anything that may have fallen out. And now we'll go ahead and go back in really quickly and we'll just go ahead and fix up this eyeshadow real quick. That eyeshadow, my eyebrows. I'm just going back in and just stamping the brow powder back into them. And I'm going to use the darker powder to go ahead and go back in and just re-intensify my tails. And with that being done, now I'll go ahead and I'll set down my eyebrows. I'm using my e.l.f. This is the Clear Mascara and Eyebrow Gel. And this is my perfect, perfect product to go in and set my brows in place. They don't slip. They don't move. They don't budge. They don't do anything throughout the day. Once I put them down and put them in place, oh, these bad boys are good to go. And I'll take and I'll go ahead, since it's a gel, and just mash them down into place to where I want them to be. And those are the eyebrows done. As it's drying, I'll go ahead and spray a spray to get rid of. Before I do that, I just noticed something else. Hold on. Oh, please. I'll go back in after I finish my actual eyeshadows, get rid of, see that harsh line right there and how crazy that looks? I like to come in and just make sure I blow everything out. To make sure I don't have any harsh stopping lines. And I'm just going back into that lighter purple that I used prior. And I'm re-intensifying the purple underneath. Because the purple was getting just a little lost. And you can't have Mardi Gras without purple. Because before I go ahead and start to put down setting sprays to really set this into place, I wanted to make sure that it was ready to be set. So my Mario the Badescu, the Calomel Aloe and Lavender Spray. And this is just to get rid of all that powder I just put on my face. And I know you're going like, Wynn, did you just put down, uh, it's not really a setting spray. It's just a spray to get rid of all the powders and stuff. And you're like, did you just really do that before you went in with an actual blush? And I'm like, yep. I'm gonna tell you what we're about to use with that. Because now as the starts to dry. Same trick I always use, just go in with your beauty sponge and just go ahead and go over your entire face. I'm gonna use a Sigma Tapered Highlighter blush, Brush. But before I do that, I'm going back into my actual sponge while I have you guys pulled in close and I'm going into my Incredible and this is the You Glow Girl. And I'm gonna go ahead and top that with my Master Holographic Prismatic Highlighter Illuminator. This is the shade 100 by Maybelline. And I'm also gonna use Scandalize, which is the Fenty Beauty one right here, just to hit the very top of it. So I pulled you guys in just a little bit closer <clears throat> so you can actually see what we're about to do to the actual highlighter part. I put the actual highlighter itself on the actual other side of the blended sponge and now we're just gonna go in. And that's just a base for it. And you're looking like, okay, Leanne, how are we gonna pull this off? Just watch. Then we're gonna go ahead and take the Maybelline on top of that, which is a really crumbly formula. See how crumbly it is? It gets all over the place. After you coat the brush, go ahead and knock most of that product off. And just go in to your high points and go across it. And you're looking like a purple highlighter, but I would've never got, I'd have never thought. And you know how like product brought down on my cheeks. And finally, we're gonna go in with the Fenty. With the Fenty one at the top. And we just send that on just the highest point. Right on in here. And the Fenty is gonna give that purple a little bit more pink. And once you have your highlighter on and done, you wanna go back into it with a regular brush with nothing else on it and just go over it. Okay, so now that I went ahead and finished blending out the actual highlighter on my face, all I did was went back into the Fenty Beauty and the highlight that you see on the inner corners and down my nose is the middle shade right here, which is Stone Cold. And I did go ahead and 
apply some blush. I use my Morphe 9B palette and inside the 9B palette I use this orange red as the actual blush to help blend in the purple. Orange and reds look really pretty on women of color. If you're a lighter skin tone, use a very light hand. If you're a darker skin tone, then you want to use the darker pigmented color blushes. But this is a really great blush palette for you guys. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the actual lashes. The lashes that I have are by Official Mink Lashes. And they're in the shade Diva. And this is what they look like. And you guys have probably seen these um, on... I want to say, what is it, Instagram, where they do the buy three, get three fee, free. So you buy three different pairs. This one pack comes with three pair in it. You buy three of these, and they give you three more for free. So all you have to do is add six to your cart, and you only wind up paying for three of the actual packages of three. So I paid less than $30 for six different packs of lashes with three in each. Um, it's a part of my unboxing haul that I'll show you guys. But we're going to go ahead and put these lashes on before we get ready to go in and do the lips. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on. And they are really, really pretty. And lashes really do go ahead and bring the entire look back together. And we'll go ahead and do some mascara since I didn't put any mascara on yet. And I'm just using my Ulta Beauty Limitless Mascara for this step. Now that the mascara is on, We'll go ahead and put some mascara on the bottom lashes. Okay, so now that we have the mascara and everything on it and in place, that's the actual look with the extra highlighter and the eyes actually done. The eyes always look so much better when you actually have the mascara done. Push these lashes up while they're still drying to get them to stand up a little bit more. But for the lips, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Crayon Case and We That. And I'm gonna go ahead and use LA Girl Glazed Lip Paint, and this is in the shade Koi. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix both of these together for my actual lips. I start out with removing the lip balm and also the rest of this foundation for my actual lips. But back to the R. Kelly thing. Um, yeah, I really hope those young ladies are able to find peace as best they can with having to come through and survive what they have. You have to remember, a lot of these little girls were taken at a very young age. So all they know is pretty much what they've had in these past few years. Some of them have been with him for the last 10 to 15 years. And when you talk about taking somebody when they're 13, 14, 16, and just being under one person's control for so long, it'd be pretty hard for them to assimilate back into normal society and do things that's normal. Because what may be normal and easy for you and I at 18, 25, 35, and 45 is gonna be super hard for these young ladies. They don't have the education, they don't have the job training, the work experience, or anything to really fall back on, and their mental state isn't gonna be as advanced as normal 25 versus their 25. And a lot of these girls are in their 20s, late 20s, almost 30 at this point. So again, my prayers are definitely with the young ladies and just being able to regain what part of their life they can capture. And I hope they're able to move on positive in a very successful way after having to come to this very dark part of, at this point, American history. But going in with weed at first. And you guys know how I feel about lip liners. I don't do it. So now that I got weed at down, I'm gonna go ahead and take the koi and put the koi in the middle. But in the comment section below, let me let me know what you guys think about it. What are your feelings with the whole Jesse Smollett situation, the Jordan Tristan Chloe situation, the whole Michael Jackson is escaping Neverland, returning to Neverland, something, whatever, losing Neverland. And what do you think about the whole R. Kelly situation? Are you happy to know that 
indictments are coming down for the people who facilitated the movement of these girls from various cities and counties to Los Angeles. Atlanta and Chicago and whatever the other city he was performing in? Or do you feel like Jesse Smollett is being set up or Kelly is being set up? Michael Jackson did it. Do you think more has been happening with the whole Jordan Woods Tristan situation after Jeffree Star came and said, you know, because they live in Calabasas, they know a little bit more about what happens in Calabasas. So they've been messing around for months now. Are you believing that? Or are you like, Will Smith and Jada don't co-sign. Anybody don't know BS. They never have and they never will. <laughs> You're on whatever side Will and Jada on. Let me know where you stand with that one. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and use my Cinema Secrets. This is the Super Cell, Super Sealer, and this is the Mattifying Setting Spray. And I'm almost out. I need to go buy some more. So now we can go ahead and set everything down. Okay, guys. So this is gonna be the actual final look. Pay no attention to the look. I need to wash my hair tomorrow, so the, the, pay no attention to that. But that's the actual look. And this is what I did for Mardi Gras. When I went out, actually I had like this little headpiece on, but it didn't make sense. Uh, looking back on it, it's kind of stupid. <laughs> I need to get an actual Mardi Gras hair if he's done. But. Okay guys, so if you've made it to this part of the video, you've been able to have a little chit chat, get ready with me. We've been through the ups and downs on what's happened in the last 45 days, Haiti and United States and the buffoonery with it. <laughs> and you were also able to see me go ahead and recreate, see me <laughs> recreate my Mardi Gras look. Hopefully it's been something here that has been able to help you along the way when you're doing your makeup specifically specifically my mistakes with the actual foundation and what was happening with the foundation and that concealer. If you're ever in a situation where you just have one concealer and it's just way too light for you, mix it in with your actual foundation to shade to help tone it down so that way it looks more presentable. Now, you wouldn't believe that an hour ago while we was doing the makeup, all of this was white, but you saw it happen on camera. That's, that's the reason why I don't cut any of the mistakes out of my videos because a lot of times you guys can be watching these huge YouTubers and different things trying to figure out how to do your makeup, how to blend, how to correct problems, but they never really show you or teach you that. Not anymore they don't because it'll start out with this part of the eye then boom it'll go back to this and you'll be like whoa whoa what are the steps what happened or if I get mascara here how do I fix it or if something goes wrong how do I fix it. That's part of the reason why I really wanted to start my channel because I just noticed certain things were just missing within our beauty space and just my everyday application going through the whole steps going through everything I was like I know what I have and what I've learned has helped me hopefully it can help you guys too but you already know the drill I don't care when you're watching me whether it's morning afternoon evening late at night or you sitting on your phone scrolling through the shade room and got me playing in the background from time to time you glance up and watch <laughs> I'm just happy that you decided to take some of your time and spend that time with me and until next time thank you so much YouTube